Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to be getting into my first uh, sponsored piece of content. Got a package dropped off from Amazon today and it wasn't something I ordered or my wife ordered surprisingly. Um, so I can only assume that it is our sponsored product for the day. And that is the Antec uh, Power Battery Bank Magnetic uh, Mount Clip. Um, we'll obviously get into it and see exactly what it is. but. The interesting thing about this is obviously that it comes with a magnetic mount clip. So the idea is that the clip will come onto the back of the Steam Deck and then you'll put the uh, battery bank right on the clip there and it'll just attach magnetically and then you'll come with a cord I assume and you'll just plug it right in and there you go. It'll just be resting right on the back there. You won't need any, uh, any more accessories. You won't need a rubber band or anything like that to hold it on. Um, so yeah, we'll just get into this here. Make sure there's nothing... Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah, so as I assumed, it's the uh, battery power bank. So yeah, we'll get right into it. Um, so you might be wondering why I have a Steam Deck fan here. So, as you might be aware, uh, and if you're not, originally when these sorts of accessories came out with the magnetic accessories onto the back of the Steam Deck, people were finding out that with the uh, Delta fan, and that's this variant of fan here. You can check in your firmware as well. Um, people claim it's the noisier fan of the two. Um, so I have both the Delta fan and the Huang fan, I believe it's called. I'd probably butcher that, I'm sorry, inside my Steam Deck already. So I did originally get the Delta fan and I switched over to the better fan, if you will. So when they emailed me and they said, oh yeah, like we fixed the problems, it works with both fans, you don't need the Huang fan, uh, you can use Delta fan, works with both models, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, perfect. I have both fans. So instead of just turning this into a, oh, how long will the battery bank last? We'll turn it into, will it actually mess up your fan or not? And how long will it last? So we'll get into it. And as we can see here, uh, here's everything that comes with it. Obviously, you get the power bank, and it has a 16,000 milliamp hour capacity. We get the magne magnetic back mount clip, sorry. And you can see in there in the picture how it kind of clips on there and where it uh, magnetizes to. And we also get a uh, USB to USB-C short cable for the battery power bank to the Steam Deck, which is perfect. So it does an output of up to 20 volts uh, and it has an input of up to 20 volts as well. So it should charge fast and it should be able to support a bunch of devices. Uh, maybe lower end laptops, like maybe a, a Chromebook. I know my Google Chromebook comes with like a 45 watt charger or something. So something like this would be able to power that for me. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, we'll just box, uh, get it right into the box here. I don't suspect there will be too much in the way of packaging. I assume we'll probably just get the power bank right there. And then I assume there's probably a cable right there. There we go. Cable. Oh wow, two cables. Okay, cool. Oh, amazing. So yeah, so we get a charging cable as well. That's perfect. Awesome. So we get a straight USB to USB-C, and then we get a angled uh, USB-C to USB-C. Perfect. And obviously the straight USB-C to USB-C is a little bit more length because presumably they'll be using it to charge. So it doesn't appear as though there's anything in the package, no sort of instructions, nothing like that. And here's the magnetic back clip. So I am just going to do this live and see if I can figure out how to get it on without, uh, without reading the instructions. So I assume that it goes a little something like that because there is the vent holes there to line up with. So I'll just push that on there. Uh, should probably want, yep, there we go. And it just kind of snaps into perfect place there, actually. Yep, it just locks right in. Has the nice, perfect little vent cutout, so you know you got it on the right side. Um, now, you might be wondering why I have the kill switch here. Obviously, it's not a part of their uh, stack. Now, I do typically run the kill switch on my Steam Deck just because it's got the nice kickstand. You got the extra SD card storage. However, I'm thinking that I might actually switch over to just running this because A, I've never dropped my Steam Deck and B, I don't really take it out of the house too, too much. So the added battery life might actually be a huge benefit. Even just around the home too, not being tied to the wall. If you want to play an extra extended length in bed or something on a lazy weekend or whatever, right? So here we go, we got the battery bank here and I'll get the weights and everything on it too. I forgot my scale. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't actually have any batteries and unfortunately this can't power my scale. So let's just take a look at the, uh, it's got a little slot there. So I just assume it lines up right there and there with the magnet. And yeah, it snaps on pretty good actually. Change my camera here. Now, the one thing I'm obviously worried about is how strong it is, but it's got, 
I mean, you can pull it off, obviously, it's a magnet. But is it going to, yes, it can, okay. So if you're playing with it, pretty relaxed, I know. Like if you, <laughs> I know it's kind of a, a bit exaggerated if you're shaking it, like here's some light, like you do a gyro, whatever, That that's okay. But it's when you start shaking it up and down violently. So if maybe, um, if you're playing an emulator game such as uh, Super Mario Galaxy, I know um, when you're playing on the Switch, and I know you can set it up for the motion controls here, for your hat spin move, you can use it to shake the Steam Deck or the, the Nintendo Switch. So if you're doing that like crazy, you might lose your battery bank, unfortunately. Now, I'm assuming I have this on the right way because there's really no other way about it. Actually, that way does feel a little bit sturdier. Eh, no, it feels honestly about the same if, if I'm honest. But it did say, okay, put it that way for the charge to go that way. Okay, so that's just my initial kind of first thoughts. So if you have young kids or something, or if you're going to be bumping around roughhousing, the magnet's not that strong. Just something to keep in mind. But if you're just relaxed, chilling around the house, not doing violent shaking movements like that, obviously, then yes, it's going to be a little bit better for you. All right, then with everything installed here, we got the battery bank on the back there, plugged into the USB-C input there, and it also does the charge as well. So there's just the one sole USB-C port. Get that attached onto the back there. And then we have the included USB-C to USB-C angled, so it keeps it nice and in line there. You could just kind of tuck that in there if you really want. Uh, kind of keep it out of the way. And honestly, the feel in the hands, you don't really feel it too bad in the hands. Uh, if you have thicker fingers, if you're moving them around, they might touch. But honestly, just holding on to the device and pressing the buttons, it doesn't really get in the way at all. No more than another brand's battery bank would, I would, I would imagine. I don't have any, but <laughs> this is my first. So, uh, But yeah, getting into it, if you just want to charge the device, it's obviously not charging because we don't have the light on. So what you're going to have to do is once you have it plugged in, you just press the power button once, and then it's going to just show the dots right there up to four dots 25 50 75 100 percent and then you can confirm there that yes it is charging the deck and then we can confirm through the software here that yes indeed it is charging because we have the plugged in symbol so now we're going from pulling let's turn it off so you turn it off with a double click so keep in mind i have my steam deck overclocked 18 watts tdp right now and it was pulling upwards of 23 to 25 watts just before I turned on the power bank there. Yep, that's creeping back up again there, 25 watts. So 26 watts even, okay. So with that, we're obviously going to drain our battery pretty darn quick. Even though I'm at full battery, it's going to drain in about an hour and a half. So not, not a long time at all, especially if you're into Tears of the Kingdom. Now turning the power bank back on, obviously it won't show us, yeah, we got this much life left, but we're charging. So now we can do some playing on the go for extended periods of time. Isn't that everybody's favorite? All right, and getting into the testing of the actual battery bank and the magnet on the back of the Steam Deck, originally what I was going to do is just use my capture card like I did for the first uh, three sections here. Um, and so I could just get a clearer picture of the RPM of the fan. And then I could just do a time lapse of it, speed it up and see that, yeah, there's no issues. Uh, in doing that though, I realized that I need to plug in my dock in order to capture my Steam Deck footage. Um, so I ended up on my third run here, I did have the battery bank and the metal backplate on the Steam Deck, and I had the battery bank plugged into the, the dock, powering the dock, which was then powering the Steam Deck. But that was pulling too much power, and the Steam Deck wasn't getting a charge, it was just draining, then eventually the Steam Deck died. So, I left the results in though, and just the footage, because yeah, we can still see that even though the battery bank going on the back of the Steam Deck, on the metal backplate, with the magnet, that the RPM did not change at all, at least for the Hawaiian fan. Let's get into the Delta.
And as we can see here, just with my quick test with the Delta fan, um, I didn't honestly feel like running it down to see how the battery life would be, because we all know it's going to be about an hour and a half to two hours, but likely an hour and a half. Um, so I just ran it for 20 minutes just to see kind of the baseline fan, and I just watched it, and again, it didn't drop below the 6800 RPM mark. Now, when I went to go put on the battery and the backplate, that's when things kind of took a turn. Keeping the backplate on the Steam Deck isn't inherently bad, it seems. Just to make quick another 20 minute test, it didn't appear to drop below the 6800 RPM mark once the temperatures all settled in with my custom fan curve. My custom fan curve is basically just pinned it out early on. And this is where the RPM settles in at. Now, what I say it got interesting is because when I put on the battery, or once I go put on the battery, that's when I noticed a spike on the fan, and it spiked up to 7,000 RPM, something it hadn't actually hit before since I'd been watching it. So I thought, okay, maybe it was the magnet just kind of moving across the device, whatever. So uh, a couple of times I was actually able to get it to spike up to 7,000 RPM, but it was never dropping below the 6,800 RPM mark. And that was just moving the battery along the back of the Steam Deck with the back plate on. Finally, I ran the Steam Deck for about two and a half hours with the battery bank attached to it. And I did the screen recorded footage. Uh, the battery bank was plugged into my phone just to charge it, just so it did have a charge going through it to see if that had any effect on it. And as we can see here, just in the little bit of footage that I'm showing, it didn't drop below the 6800 RPM mark and it didn't spike below or above, sorry, the 7000 RPM mark. And I did watch all the two and a half hours of footage sped up, mind you. And yeah, I didn't notice any drops below 6800 RPM. And if there was, it was not for a significant amount of time at all. So yeah, I would say magnetic accessories are back in. Um, Unlike the kill switch with Dbrand when they first launched their kill switch, it was a magnetic stand on the back of it. And that was found to cause issues with the Delta fans as well as other magnetic accessories such as the Antank brand. Uh, they uh, had an issue with their original design as well. So it appears everything's all fixed and it's all good. So it works with the Delta fan, works with the Flying fan. Yeah, all good. Knowing now that the battery bank is good and it's not going to damage your deck with the magnets or anything like that, we did some battery testing and we got these results here. So as you can see, we got the battery bank lasted for 2 hours and 40 minutes and it kept the Steam Deck at a full charge that whole time. The Steam Deck then lasted another 2 hours or so and it lasted all together with the battery bank and the Steam Deck for 4 hours and 26 minutes. Now, to charge the deck from 0% to full, which I wouldn't honestly recommend doing, but I guess you can do that, uh, it took about 2 hours and 17 minutes, and there was about 25% left, at least that's the light that lit up, all it left on the battery bank. Um, charging the battery bank, it took about 2 hours and 57 minutes, I was using the 45 watt charger, and it obviously will vary on input. Uh, if you have it on 5 watt charger, it's going to take all night to charge, which, whatever, it's a battery bank, like, I'm sure a lot of people are going to do that. Uh, unless you're about to go run out for a quick day at the beach or doing something, right? Like, then it can accept those fast inputs to charge faster, which is nice. Finally, I just wanted to touch on Antank a little bit as a company. Uh, just doing a little bit of due diligence, as I would recommend everyone do, especially before buying electronics and stuff, or things to charge your expensive electronics. Uh, or the docking stations as well, because I know they offer Nintendo Switch accessories and Nintendo Switch third-party docks, they've been known to cause issues with the deck or the docks themselves in the past. So we'll look into some of those reviews as well. Now, they've been around since 2018. They're based out of the US, UK, Australia, and I believe Germany. Uh, their store does offer free worldwide shipping. They didn't ask me to mention any of this. I'm just doing this on my own. Uh, now, going to their Amazon.ca reviews for the battery bank, we can see here that it says it's only for the Hawaiian fan. But if you go onto their actual website, it says in the information here that they fixed it for the Delta and the Hawaiian fan. And I've confirmed that in my testing that yes, when properly mounted, it doesn't have any effect on either of the fans. So um, I'm not sure if this is an updated model or if this is the older model. I'll reach out to the rep that I've been speaking with and I'll confirm and I'll either pin that as a comment in the video or I'll uh, edit it into the video itself, depending on how long it takes them to get back to me. Now, I like to kind of go into the three-star reviews. So here it says Magnus stops the fan. This was back in February 25th. Again, this could be, the, that was obviously an older model, I would assume, because 
I've confirmed yes again that in my testing, uh, the new updated model doesn't have any effect on the Delta fan. Uh, again, here it says that Magnet did cause some issues on a deck. This was back in February 20th, so same thing. January 25th, uh, okay, it does work at charging the deck, but unfortunately it caused the deck lag to use, which again would be causing the fan to slow down. Makes my games freeze, don't know why, because the Magnet. So these are all older reviews, I assume, unless that this is still the old battery bank. Again, I'll confirm. Going down to the one star reviews, we can see here it burned out immediately. This was a recent review, June 2nd, so the beginning of the month. So I used it for one day, now I cannot hold a charge. Now just one light going, it overheated. Sucks to be at $50 or more. Uh, I don't know why they wouldn't just reach out to Amazon and get a refund, because I believe it's about two to three months that they offer. Uh, broke my deck more than three minutes before it starts crashing. This was back in May 26, so I don't know. It was relatively recent, but I don't know if that's the older thing. And then so here, January 19th, that's an older one. Uh, going to more recent one, March 26, can damage your deck. So it looked like they've obviously fixed the issues. There's no question about that. But just do your own do due diligence, sorry. And weed through the reviews, kind of pick and choose where you're taking information from. Some people are a little bit more intricate with the reviews, obviously. Some people are more like, oh yeah, it's good. And then leave it at that. So do your own research as well. Don't just take my word for it. Because again, I've got no skin in the game for this. I didn't spend any money on it. It was nice of them to send it to me. I'm, I'll, I'll be thankful for that, and I thank them for that. Um, but I don't take just my word for it. Do your own research as well. And that's all I can honestly recommend. Um, Antec as a company, I've heard of them before with the Nintendo Switch accessories, but I've not owned any other products before. Like I said, the uh, dock here. My uh, third-party dock that I have upstairs from my Steam Deck, it crapped out on me in about a month and a half. It's a, just a glorified USB-C hub now. It doesn't accept power, doesn't accept internet, nothing. Um, just USB-A input. So maybe I will purchase this one to replace it because it's a decent price. Um, uh, but yeah, and then maybe I'll just do a small little kind of quick video on that just to speak of the quality and the performance and then I'll do updates as well uh, if it craps out over time or if it doesn't. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll see how that goes. To close the video off, we'll do a quick who's a for, who's a not for. So it's a great option for somebody that's not having a case, not going to run a case, never will run a case. And it's a 16,000 milliamp hour capacity for a 45 watt hour PD charge. Great all in one solution in my opinion. You'll have no issues with it. I tested it, the magnets are fine. It won't mess up the fan. If you already have a uh, battery bank, then you can go to Glisco. I've never heard of them before, but you can buy a clip with a strap for $22, I assume USD. That's an option if you already have a battery bank. If you have the kill switch or you're wanting the kill switch, that's $75 USD for the kill switch and the mount. That gets you the kickstand as well as a skin and the mount. If you don't want the mount, then it's just a straight 60 bucks US. If you already have it, then it's just a $15 USD. So if you have a case, must have a case, then either the kill switch or we have the JSOX, which is a very popular case as well. It's an all-in-one solution itself that has the battery bank, the kickstand, or the battery bank holder, sorry, and the kickstand, as well as a nice travel case. The travel case on the kill switch is an additional $15 as well. So at that, if you're getting the travel case and the universal mount, you're looking at 90 USD there, plus uh, I believe $10 shipping generally, or not more. Um, yeah, so if you have a case, must have a case, then honestly JSOX is probably the better option in my opinion compared to the kill switch, unless you're already paying in USD or whatever. Do whatever's best for you money-wise, sense-wise, and again, do your research. Uh, but again, yeah, it wouldn't make sense in my opinion to buy a battery bank and then go out and buy this clip as well. Um, unless you plan on running like a ridiculous size battery bank on it like if you want a 30,000 milliamp hour battery or I don't know what the maximum capacity of these things go up to these days but 30,000 uh, there's a 36 milliamp hour battery solar charge but it, yeah for 50 bucks I don't know if I would trust that so anyway I wouldn't recommend going that route I would just recommend honestly going with the ant tank and Again, it's just a great all-in-one solution. Uh, they did say that if you use code ANTANK23 at checkout, that you'll save 10% off. So if you put that in at checkout there, I put it in already, and yeah, ANTANK23. 
So I don't know how long this code is valid until they did not say. If you're interested in buying this, I would highly recommend that you act fast then to take advantage of that product code or promo code, sorry. Uh, again, I don't have any skin in the game. I don't get any kickback. I don't get anything. They just sent me the battery bank and that was it. That was, that's the deal. Uh, provided that I make the video, obviously. Beyond that, let me know what you guys think of my first kind of official sponsored review. I think I was fairly fair in <laughs> my opinion, but again, that's just my opinion. Obviously, I'm probably going to be biased in that. Uh, there's things I probably could have done better, but uh, let me know in the comments. Hopefully, we can get more kind of sponsored things like this in the future as the channel grows. I would absolutely love to take more sponsorships from Antank as a company. I personally recommend their battery bank so it would be nice to check out their other products as well but again i'll probably end up purchasing one of these docks uh on my own just to have and then i'll update in the future as well if there's any issues with it as well as the battery bank as well i'll post any issues as a pinned comment in this if there is any but i highly doubt it and again uh let me know in the comments what you guys feel if uh you hate it you like it whatever uh, no comment who cares thanks for watching and have a good day